Hello everyone, happy new year, I wish all the best to you and your beloved ones, thank you very much for the channel support guys, we have a huge growth over the last month, I still cannot believe we are almost 200, it is time for the second devlog from my series in which I am building my dream game. So, last few weeks I have been working hard on introducing and building new mechanics for my game, I started by making a simple power up spell that fires golden spheres which collides and do a radio explosion, this will help me to build a more complex puzzle and interact with the environment. The sphere can interact with every actor that has a proper collision on it, the sphere fires at the camera location and goes forward, if it doesn't hit anything for 3 seconds it will despawn. I was able to clamp the angle so my character cannot shoot besides his back only 90 degrees in front of him in both directions left and right. The whole mechanic basically contains two BP classes, one for the explosion to fire an event only this and the other is for the glowing sphere itself. This is an early prototyping and as you see there is still no casting animations for the sphere but I'll get them to. I'll show you the system very quick. The explosion BP contains force component with sprite component and particle system attached to it. It fires an impulse and that's all. The push magic BP holds the projectile movement component and the actual sphere, the mesh. And of course in the player BP I fire an event and spawn an actor in front of my camera. The first delay node here will help you in the cases where you press the fire button and rotate your camera very fast. It may spawn the sphere behind the player's back but the delay node fixes that. And basically this is for the purpose of the reasonable video length I won't dive deep into all of my mechanics. If you want I'll make a tutorial for any of these systems just write down in the comments. The second thing was to migrate my single level to a world partition system for streaming and level performance. This led to other things like the need for developing safe and load system since the object will unload and load again in their default position once the character goes out and in loading range. I found that the easiest way would be to keep my interactable objects always loaded but as you can tell this is not the sharpest solution there. Also I am pretty sure that the world partition system is not stable yet since I have encountered weird behaviors. For example the laser beam coming from the laser emitter does not unload when the player goes out of loading range for some reason. Sometimes the chunks are not unloading or loading when it needs to and things like this. I'm thinking of developing my own safe and load system that will rely on the world partition later on. Finally I made my laser system which contains the laser emitter, the laser receiver and the beam as a separate BP. The laser emitter is pretty basic, it shoots a line trace in front of the glowing cube on this glowing cube which reflects if the laser touches a glass material. The turret can be rotated, the receiver reports a collision and activates the glowing center. I have still a lot of work to do here like changing the laser color to green or some other color when the laser hits the receiver. And when this happens, as you see, this stone structure is released and the player can pick up the block to continue ahead. The structures share almost the same logic as the interactive doors. Basically it has a tar target location as a vector that holds the information about the wanted position of the structure and just lurps on the event using a timeline, that's all, nothing special here. Using the laser, the in interactive door and the power up systems I was able to complete my first demo shrine which contains a pretty basic puzzle. I added some after effects and post processing to achieve the look and feel I wanted. I add some dust particles and some planar reflections. I created a new camera and used a level BP to switch between the third person camera and the newly created world camera when the player is in range of the laser turret. You can see the whole video of the shrine at the upper right corner of your screen. I'm still using a lot of blueprints there for an early prototyping because it saves a lot of time but soon I'll start to migrate and translate them in, into code. As for the climbing system guys I know that many of you are wondering what will happen. I've just reworked the whole system twice because I'm experiencing some troubles with the dynamic landscapes and the proper detection. The system is still in progress and I'll share an update when I have a reasonable progress or when I finished it. Since I have a basic mechanics now, in the next few weeks I'll be focusing more on the level design aspect and building my open world. I've heard about software called Terrasculptor and I'm very excited to give it a shot, at least for the general layout and the height maps. Lots of manual work will be needed too, I have a limited knowledge for the building of an open world so I'll have to investigate this branch a little bit further. 
I also will need to find a way to procedurally spawn a foliage besides the actual manual work. That was for today's episode, thank you for the huge support one more time. If you like this video please like and subscribe to my channel, it means a lot to me, you are helping me very much. See you next time, bye!